So the first reaction we're going to look at with alkenes is called hydrohalogenation. Hydrohalogenation. And if you were to break apart the word, you'll see hydro and halo. So basically what you're doing is you're taking an alkene, and I'll draw a, a template reaction. So let's say you had this compound that is uh, one, so you got one meth eth prop but 2-butene, because the, the, the alkene functional group starts at carbon 2, so you would call it 2-butene. And if you were to react that in a solution of HCl, in a sufficiently acidic solution, which just means you need enough HCl, that would go to this alkyl halide. It's just an alkyl chain, so meth, eth, pro, but, with a Cl, so it would be 2-chlorobutane. So you went from an ene to an ane via that reaction. That would be a 2-chloro. And basically how this reaction works is a pi bond is far more likely, is far more reactive than a sigma bond. Uh, those double bonds, which are the pi bonds, if you'll remember, are far more reactive than sigma bonds. So what actually happens in that reaction is, uh, here, let me keep it like this, uh, is that one of those pi bonds, what, I, how, what the easiest way to remember is you have your HCl, which is a covalent bond between a hydrogen and a chloride, and that pi bond can go out and grab one of those hydrogens and leave the chlorine. Now, chlorine is a very, or HCl is a very strong acid, which means that the Cl anion, when you have this in solution, is a very stable base. So it's a good leaving group from that HCl. You can pluck off that hydrogen because when chlorine is by itself, it's very stable. But what happens after that, the, the, uh, pi bond goes out and grabs the hydrogen. Well, you have this, this uh, kind of transition state that looks like this. You have one carbon that's gone out and now grabbed the hydrogen, but the other carbon, the secondary, or the third, that third carbon, so if you label them, that third carbon, where it used to have four bonds, because remember there's a, there's a kind of a, an implicit hydrogen, there's uh, still that implicit hydrogen, but now that carbon still only has three bonds. So without, one, without that bond, with the one that's been broken by the pi bond, it is now what's called a carbocation. It's a carbon that has a positive charge. So those are very unstable and uh, will readily react with the chlorine ion that's left in solution. The chlorine ion will attack that carbocation to return it to stability. And you'll go to our final product, which is what I drew earlier. And I suppose I should talk for a minute about the, uh, the arrow convention for reactions. And all the arrows mean is you're drawing where the electrons in a bond or a molecule are attacking. So in this right up here, the electrons in this pi bond are attacking and making a bond with this hydrogen. These electrons are leaving and going to the chlorine. So the arrow goes from where the electrons were to where they went. Um... Now, what would have happened if, say, this molecule wasn't symmetric? Let's say we started with something like this. Now, that that uh, that pi bond is not symmetric. There's not another. There's not another alkyl group over there. So, what would happen? Well, there's two possible. There's two possible outcomes. One would be this uh, this sig or pi bond swings out, grabs a hydrogen. Those electrons go to the chlorine. And our first option is this. We would end up with something like, yeah, let me redraw that. Something like this. And then we'd have a carbocation at this, that terminal, that terminal carbon. Our other option is, that was a good two, is this. The hydrogen goes to the terminal carbon and we end up with this compound. So the hydrogen goes here and we end up with a carbocation here. Now uh, if you want to look it up, the technical term here is called hyperconjugation, but basically these carbons 
can donate electron density to their, the, the carbons that are adjacent to them. So since these carbo, since carbocations are electron deficient, which is why they're, they're net positive, because they need electron charge, they want electron density, this carbocation over here is more stable than this one because this carbocation has two methyl groups donating electron density, making it more stable. This carbocation only has one methyl group donating electron density. So this is by far, number two, is by far your favorite result. Um, one way to put this is, I can't remember the name of the rule, but if you think of it, that which has more gets more. So this carbon right here originally had two hydrogens on it, whereas this one only had one. So the one that had two hydrogens got another hydrogen. It now has three, if we were to draw out those original two. And the one that had one still only has one. So the one that had more hydrogens got another hydrogen. And then, of course, of course, you can't forget that that chlorine ion is going to attack that carbocation, and your final product will be this. So another example, just to, to bury the point home, um, it's important to remember that the more substituted side of the double bond is going to receive the halogen. So if you have something like this, and let's say this time, just for the sake of uh, being slightly different, we'll do HI instead of HCl, you would end up with, take a guess, this. Because your intermediate after, after that, that pi bond goes and breaks out and grabs the hydrogen and the, the, uh, the iodine leaves, you're going to end up with this as your intermediate. And this is technically how you draw intermediates. Let me get rid of that arrow. You're supposed to put brackets around them. You would end up with this carbocat tertiary carbocation intermediate. Tertiary. So tertiary carbocations are more stable than secondary, which are more stable than primary, and you're not ever going to see a methyl carbocation. That's just too unstable. So then the iodine is going to come in, attack that carbocation, and you get your product. So that is how hydrohalogenation of alkenes work. One more time, just to go over the, uh, the template reaction, is you take a double bond, you put it in an acidic, uh, acidic solution of some... Uh, uh, H HCl, HBr works slightly differently, we'll get to that, or HI, and you end up with, or actually, let me put it this way, X, put X, where X is some halogen, you end up with this. So next time we will do hydration, which is just adding water to a double bond, so see you guys then.